Hello, everyone. Have you ever wondered how arid lands, scorched by relentless sun and barren soil, can nurture plants that yield vibrant, nutrient-rich, and economically valuable fruits? Today, we embark on a remarkable journey to explore two extraordinary members of the cactus family, the resilient prickly pear, cactus fruit, and the dazzling pataya, Mexican dragon fruit. From thorny fields to dining tables worldwide, these fruits are not only a lifeline for millions of farmers, but also a symbol of human ingenuity and sustainable agriculture in the face of climate change. The prickly pear, also known as cactus fruit or nopal fruit, belongs to the Opuntia genus of the cactus family. It's a remarkable crop with an exceptional ability to thrive in harsh environments. Originating in the Americas, particularly Mexico, prickly pear has spread to arid and semi-arid regions worldwide, including southern Italy, Spain, Morocco, Tunisia, South Africa, and the southwestern United States, such as Arizona, Texas, and California. A standout example is Guizhou Province, China, where over 345,000 acres of prickly pear cultivation produce approximately 352,000 tons of fresh fruit annually, generating over $2 billion in revenue in 2022. With its drought tolerance, ability to combat desertification, and soil conservation benefits, prickly pear is not just an economic crop, but a sustainable solution for regions grappling with climate change. Prickly pear cultivation begins with a simple yet effective propagation method, cutting pads from healthy mother plants, typically one to two years old. These pads are left to dry in the shade for a few days to form a protective callus, preventing root rot upon planting. The pads are buried about half to two-thirds of their length in well-draining soil, slightly tilted toward the sun to optimize light absorption. The soil is often mixed with manure to provide initial nutrients. Planting can occur year-round, but it's best to avoid frost-prone months when temperatures drop below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, particularly in regions like California or Spain. For the first two to three years, prickly pear plants need protection from herbivores and competing weeds. Drip irrigation is ideal, delivering minimal water to prevent water logging, which can cause pad rot. Weed control is typically manual to ensure sustainability, though some large-scale farms cautiously use herbicides. Organic and mineral fertilizers are applied periodically to boost yield, while pruning shapes the plant, improving airflow and sunlight penetration through the pads. These efforts not only promote healthy plant growth, but also sustain agricultural ecosystems, protecting soil from erosion and combating desertification. From late spring to early summer, typically May to June in regions like Jalisco, Mexico, and the southwestern U.S., the cactus flowering season transforms arid landscapes into a vibrant display of color. Prickly pear cacti burst with radiant yellow, orange, and pink flowers, adorning their flat pads like jewels under the scorching sun.
prickly pear harvest season spans from late summer to early fall, typically July to September in warm climates like Mexico, Italy, or Morocco. In California's Salinas Valley, the season extends from late August to early April. When the skin turns a vibrant red, it signals perfect ripeness. Harvesting requires skill and caution, as prickly pears are covered in sharp spines and tiny, irritating glottides. Farmers equip themselves with thick leather gloves, protective goggles, and specialized tools like hooked poles or knives to gently detach the fruit from the plant. For taller plants, long-handled tools are designed to pick fruit without damaging its delicate skin, ensuring market quality. After harvest, prickly pears are transported by tractor to processing facilities to prepare them for fresh sale. Here, the fruit undergoes a rigorous cleaning process to ensure food safety and market quality. First, the fruit is brushed to remove dirt and glottids. It then passes through a vacuum machine to eliminate remaining debris and is washed with chlorinated water to kill bacteria. The drying process is swift. Cold air for five seconds cools the surface, followed by hot air for 20 seconds to ensure the fruit is completely dry and ready for further steps. A quality control team visually inspects each fruit, removing those that are bruised, overripe, or have aesthetic flaws, such as scratches or uneven color. Substandard fruit is diverted to the puree production line. High quality fruit is fed into an automated sorting machine, aligned in single file, and placed into cups on a computer-guided weighing system. This machine sorts the fruit by size, from small, under 3.5 ounces, to large, over 5.3 ounces, and applies grower price code labels for traceability. The prickly pears then move via conveyor to the packing area, where workers pack them into line transport boxes made of food grade materials, such as plastic clamshells or cardboard cartons, to prevent damage during shipping. Before leaving the facility, Another worker performs a final check to remove any imperfect fruit that slipped through earlier inspections. Fresh, high-quality prickly pears are stored at 39 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit to slow ripening, extending shelf life for transport and retail display. These fresh fruit batches are distributed to local markets, supermarkets, or exported to international markets like the United States, Europe, and Asia, where they are prized for their sweet flavor, juicy texture, and nutritional value. Prickly pear is a nutritional powerhouse, boasting exceptional vitamin C content, 1,980 to 3,750 milligrams per 3.5 ounces, 800 times that of apples, and 100 times that of oranges. Fiber, antioxidants, and anti-inflammatory compounds that support heart health, reduce chronic disease risk, and aid digestion. Scaling 30-foot-tall cacti, dodging sharp spines, and enduring scorching heat is the only way to reach this sweet, juicy fruit. Pitaya, or Mexican dragon fruit, is the fruit of the organ pipe cactus, Stenocereus quereteroensis, primarily grown in Jalisco, Mexico, and select areas of the southwestern United States. Unlike prickly pear or common dragon fruit, pitaya is exclusive to specific regions, making it one of the rarest and most expensive fruits. 
A 2022 study warns that 31% of cactus species are threatened with extinction, potentially rising to 90% by 2050 due to increasingly hot and dry climates, posing significant challenges for Pattaya's future. Pattaya harvest season runs from mid-April until the first summer rains, lasting about 60 to 70 days. Farmers work from night to early morning, using long poles with hooks to pick fruit from cacti, towering up to 30 feet. Harvesting requires precision to avoid scratching the fruit's delicate skin, as even a minor blemish reduces market value and speed spoilage. Each plant yields only one fruit per day, totaling about 60 fruits per season, far less than common dragon fruit. 100 fruits per harvest, three harvests per season. With 85% water content, pitaya is highly perishable, losing flavor and texture within 24 hours of picking. Thus, it must be processed immediately after harvest. Skilled workers manually remove dozens of tiny spines, taking care not to damage the outer skin. During peak season, a single worker can clean 3,000, 4,000 fruits daily. Once cleaned, pitaya is quickly distributed to local markets in Jalisco where a batch of 4,000 high-quality fruits can fetch $2,700. Urgent transport to major cities like Guadalajara can raise the price to $7,400. Exporting to markets like the U.S. is a major challenge due to the need for rapid transport via first-class air freight or trucks across the border, driving prices to $22 for five fruits. Pattaya is primarily sold fresh at roadside stands, traditional markets, or along the Kalima-Guadalajara Highway. Some businesses process pitaya into jams, juices, or wines, but the scale is small due to its perishability and high costs. Processed products typically serve the domestic market or high-end international clients. Pattaya shines with four vibrant colors, white, red, purple, and yellow. Each plant producing fruit with distinct sweetness and flavor. Rich in vitamin C, fiber, potassium, iron, calcium, and omega-3 fatty acids from its seeds, pitaya meets global nutritional demands. In Jalisco, pitaya is a key economic driver, supporting small family businesses and creating seasonal jobs. A batch of 4,000 fruits can generate significant income, but the short 60-70-day season makes year-round livelihoods challenging. Climate change and the risk of cactus extinction further increase pitaya's rarity, driving up prices and highlighting its cultural value in Mexico. Prickly pear and pitaya are more than just fruit-bearing plants. They are symbols of human resilience and innovation in harnessing nature's potential in harsh landscapes. Prickly pear, with its vast cultivation areas and high yields, plays a critical role in sustainable agriculture, combating desertification, and diverse processing from puree to wine. Pitaya, though rare and difficult to transport, commands high economic value and embodies Mexico's cultural pride, especially in Jalisco.
Both crops reflect harmony between humanity and nature, from meticulous cultivation and careful harvesting to processing into nutritious products that meet global demand. Amid climate change, prickly pear and pataya are not just crops, but reminders of the importance of sustainable agriculture. When you sip a prickly pear juice or bite into a sweet pataya, remember the farmer's hands, the thorny fields, and the incredible journey that brought them to you. If this story inspires you, share your thoughts in the comments and follow for more captivating agricultural journeys.